Cloud. All righty. Hello, wonderful beings, and welcome to the TSC Audio Project. Uh, today, I'm speaking with Ben Patrick, who you might all know as Knee Over Toes Guy on Instagram. Big fan of the name. Love that. Uh, so, Ben, thank you for taking the time to chat today. Appreciate it. Dude, thank you so much for having me on. You're very welcome. I've been looking forward to this. I've been uh, hearing a lot of stuff about you from people within our community and even uh, on some of the comments that I browsed through once in a while on Instagram. So happy we could finally connect and, uh, and make it work. And, you know, maybe because it's your first time on the podcast, um, let's start with getting you to tell people a little bit about who you are, what you do, and, you know, the problems that you're focused on solving right now. Yeah, I mean, pretty simply, I just grew up with chronic knee pain from about 12 years old. By 18, it had a few surgical alterations, and I was dead set on being a basketball player, but I just I couldn't get past my knee pain. So it kind of went from a career of trying to be a basketball player to then just trying to figure out knees. And it just so happened that the stuff that I needed required me to get good with my knees over my toes and to bend those knees and to, to get capable at those things. So that saved me. I ended up getting college scholarships for basketball lived a totally different life but I was so passionate about this stuff that helped me that I was already just starting to train people train people you know almost immediately and I've I've been a trainer ever since and you know that's become my full passion is just helping people with their knees so I've I've studied it extensively and had mentors around the world on knees and honestly you know the same concepts of getting more ability with the knees I'm finding it's really the same for the whole body, which is like, if you can figure out how to increase the ability of an area to get it to what it naturally should be, find, you know, where did modern life, where did modern training deviate from how it was supposed to be, get mm -hmm. back to the natural state, improve ability. So those, those are kind of my theories now is just that like with the knees and with the whole body, my full-time job is just basically helping people, uh, you know, identify where did we go wrong? restore what we should be able to do and just all around improve ability. Wow. That's super powerful. I love, it's so funny because the people who I come across in this, you know, uh, in, in the path of life, the people who are the best at their thing almost always come from like this hero's journey uh, path where it's like, they had to deal with it. It was a massive challenge for them in their lives. They put so much energy into figuring their shit out that they're like, well, if I could figure it out, then I can help other people figure it out. And, um, and I love that you came from that perspective. And, you know, what you said about knees is really a reflection of where we started at TFC as well. It's like, all right, a bunch of people have foot problems. Uh, the sources of these problems are actually fairly a simple. Bunch. It's the <laughs> hidden feet are the hidden killer that yeah. no one's talking about. But when you start talking to people, you find out so many people are struggling there. Anyways, yeah. I, I've just been talking about this so much lately that feet are like the silent killer that we're kind of embarrassed. Like we don't really talk about it. So carry on. Yeah, no. And, you know, I noticed your ATG, one of your 10 ATG principles, the first one is built from the ground up. And I was like, hell yeah, yeah. preach, because that is exactly <laughs> my feeling. And, you know, this whole notion that getting really good at at a specific thing that can that many other people will face is like technology is this weird thing now where it's like if you're the best person in the world at solving that problem you now have the opportunity to solve the world's problem, right? Like Jeff Bezos is the best person at solving the problem of how do I get shit to your door? Therefore, he does it for the world. And, you know, I love that you've specialized with knees because, you know, oftentimes that opens a conversation to other areas of the body, like you said, but if you're the best dude at that, that's why I love your name, Knee Over Toes Guy. And it's like, it's very catchy. It's very memorable. And, you know, and looking at your stuff, uh, it's, it's really awesome. Thank you for doing the work you do because, you know, when I was practicing as a physio, like, People accept that knee dysfunction is an inevitability and it's such a crap story. So maybe let's talk about, let's dive into your story a little bit more. So you had knee issues. Uh, when did you really start to, like how long ago was that in, in terms of the timeline? Yeah, I mean, they, they started when I was around 12. Like I wasn't like the other kids. I couldn't go play at recess and stuff. I would have had to get warmed up. I was so obsessive with basketball. I was doing like pretty intense training starting at like nine years old and I probably mm. didn't have the best genetics for basketball so my strategy was always like I, I knew I didn't have the genetic the genetics for basketball so I knew I was gonna have to outwork everyone well in my case outworking meant destroying my body from a very early age so <laughs> my you know if your knees already in pain at 12 
And now you go from 12 to 18, all those formative years of testosterone without being able to put pressure, you know, really on your knees the way that other people are. So, you know, I, I ended up with super undeveloped muscles and tendons around the knee. So that's kind of like how it happened is like, you know, overtrain on jumping stuff so hard by 12 that you already have chronic knee pain. So now you go through puberty without your knees going over your toes practically. You know what I mean? So I was kind of like a product of like, what happens if you just like restrict, you know, these motions, never, you know, bend your knees all the way down, never go knees over toes. And, you know, now my life became the opposite. So I was, it was finally a quote that really hit um, from a guy named Charles Poliquin who trained 286 Olympic medalists. And he said, it's actually the knee that can go farthest and strongest over the toe that's the most protected. And so when I saw that, I realized like in that moment, like, holy shit, like that explains me, like that explains it, you know? And so now it's been a career of figuring out how do I get good at those positions without messing myself up doing so. So because I was so jacked up, I had to start from ground zero on all this stuff. Like if I was just a normal, you know, 19, I was around 19 when I started all these experiments and doing all this stuff. If I was just a normal guy, it wouldn't have been the same at all. I, I was so fragile. So I had to figure out super, you know, scalable routes on all this stuff. And so now I can actually like do all this stuff. So number one, I just wanted to play basketball without my knees hurting. I never mm. expected, I never expected I'd be able to dunk. I never expected I'd now have like people are like, holy shit, my knees could never do that. Your knees are so strong. It's like, oh, like I never expected. So that's why it's kind of like, dude, like if I could, go from fragile to like freaky bulletproof we could all make some degree of improvement like i've never seen such a thing as like well this body is a non-responder no like it's right. muscles it's tendon like it these are physical bodies like it's not we're not improving it by like wishful thinking like it's this is all you know measurable stuff but the more you know your subject the more you know how to do it without working through pain doing it enough that you can actually make adaptation and improve so you could see like, because I started so low, it actually set a foundation to really like figure some shit out, you know, like e either yeah. I was going to like, either I was going to keep having knee surgeries and destroy myself, or I was going to figure some stuff out. And obviously I figured some stuff out because not only have I not had recurring problems now, anyone who follows me can see, I actually put like insane demands on my knees every single day, year round, jumping off you know, super high things, landing in crazy positions, super like, basically, I have to prove that I have world class knees. How do you do that? I don't know. Part right. of it is the is the consistency to do all that, you know, to do intense stuff all the time. So that's kind of the point I was able to, I was able to create a route because I started, you know, at the mm. bottom. And, and I yeah. think that I think that there's, you know, with knees, and strength training, I think there was a bit of a, of a gap of like a disconnect. Right. And I think it's the same thing about the feet. So if we think about strength training, think about a, a squat or a deadlift, the foot is flat, the foot's not moving, the foot's not strengthening the foot. So, okay. You drive up your squat and deadlift and now you have shin splints. Well, no shit. Like you just asked the universe for shin splints. You just said, I right. would like to have shins. I, I would exactly like what you should have. <laughs> right. Like I, I would like everything above you know to have more weight and power but then not ask to be able to handle that power or right. maybe i do three sets of you know calf raises you know and and wonder why i still have you know plantar fasciitis when i did 20 sets on chest and 20 you know <laughs> so so that's what i'm looking forward to diving into you you know about today is that I, I think it's the same for the feet. I think there's a huge disconnect there that we don't think of training the feet. Like we, it's not something I never thought about it. So if I'm knees over toes guy and I never thought, Hey, the feet is part of our body. We should be training our feet. You can imagine we almost all probably at some point in our lives, you know, had this disconnect. And now if we're listening to this, we probably all had, you know, a moment where we realized shit, maybe it shouldn't be normal for a human body that we're all in pain, spending thousands of dollars on surgeries and treatments and look at anti-inflammatory drugs and stuff. How, what a massive industries these are just trying to pain becomes normal. Mm. So I actually, 
even after having major success with my knees, I had terrible foot pain. I was practically crawling out of bed in the morning, but it's because I got my, my knees so strong. Now that was in the early stages. And then I quickly realized, holy crap, like my foot, my dad had chronic foot pain. And I was like, wow, maybe I'm just destined. But then I had that, that moment where I'm like, holy shit, I'm not destined to chronic foot pain. I need to train my damn feet. So now it's actually like, as you said, principle number one in my system is built from the ground up because even if we're going to address your knees, we don't want to create a problem below the knee by trying to address the knee. So that is our style. And it leads to more bulletproof knees because imagine slow motion. You're, you, you jump off a, a one story building, right? One story, slow motion. You're about to hit the ground right off the bat, toes, feet, ankles, lower leg muscles. I mean, it, think of life that way now. But so basically, the better your toes, the better your feet, the better your ankles, the better everything above that is. But the, mm. the inverse is not true. The bigger your bench doesn't mean your feet are going to be more protected. You see what I mean? Right. So, yeah. so it starts with the feet. The feet already begin protecting the knees. The knees then help proper, proper foot, ankle, knee function. Now makes it very easy to get a healthy back. And actually, a very healthy back makes it really easy to get healthy shoulders. Mm. And, and now life life itself you become like why is everyone else in pain and then then you realize you're like what the heck like i used to be one of those people i was always in pain and this and that and having to spend hours on treatments and well you know yeah. there 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 you go so that's just kind of like my little pre-speech on you know why i wanted to do your podcast you know what i mean like it you can see how serious i am about building from the ground up and and from the feet so where do we go from here? Dude, that was a great, that was a great pre pre speech. I'm just going to give a slow clap to that, but you know, like a couple of things you said there, I love what you said. Okay. If you're doing all these things, those are what create shin splints. You're basically asking the universe unintentionally for shin splints. And it brings me to this sort of like core principle that I internalize is that the body is exquisite perfection. Like it is so good at everything it should be doing. We just simply underestimate it. And we, you know, the easy assumption is that if something's broken, it, my bo it's an equipment fault, right? It has to do with my body is flawed. Therefore, I need these things to help me improve how my body works. But we never, I think it's just the ego that says like, we never think that it's a user fault. You know, like my notion is that the body works perfectly until we mess it up. So the question is, that's right. or the question should be, what are we doing to mess this up? And, you know, this whole that's thing right. of asking the universe for shin spence is like, when you spend most of your day in a chair, you are asking the universe for a messed up lower body system, namely hips, but also all the other stuff. And, you know, yeah. I always think of hips, knees and feet as like this trio, right? It's like a three person yeah. team. Whatever one team yep. member can't do, the other team members have to do more of. And when you sit in chairs all day and you wear shoes that mess your feet up, well, there's one team member holding the entire, like ho holding the world on its back and that's the knees. And so, you know, like, people underestimate how important regional interdependence is because everything I was taught in physio school was knee pain equals treat the knees. And it's so backwards because that makes zero sense, right? Like the area where symptoms are is almost never where the problem is. It's simply where the manifestation of the load is, is like being, it's being overwhelmed by a load that it shouldn't be carrying. Same thing with plantar fasciitis. It's like, we need to look at the body as a lower, the lower body as a system of systems, right? The knee is a system, the ankle is a system, the foot's a system, hip is a system all the systems have to integrate together for a happy holistic system. And, you know, troubleshooting that was something that, and I love how you use the word experiment because I use that word quite frequently in my vocabulary. And I, I really think that like to discover what you need to do or what works, you need to experiment. And so, you if know, we wouldn't be having these problems if it was already figured out. Exactly. And, and the other now, thing too is it's easy to think you can figure out other people's problems, but all you can do is give them templates for experiments that they can run and, and hopefully be mindful enough to, to figure shit out. Do it. Yeah. Do it with yourself. Like if you're a knee coach yes. and your knees suck, like, I'm sorry, maybe you know <laughs> what you're talking about, but no, but probably not, probably not. But like this, that's, but this yeah. kind of, this kind of becomes the status quo. I was doing jump programs from guys who couldn't jump, who were using guys who could jump to market it. Well, no wonder I couldn't jump it, it. There's no evidence that that shit actually works. It should start internally. Like you should handle your own shit, then get busy experimenting on others. And what I mean by that is, yeah, like I trained bazillions of people. Now I was never working through pain, these kind of concepts, but like 
there, there's not studies behind almost any exercise I do. So yeah, you would call it experiment, but the problems are there. So how do we get out of that cycle? You know what I mean? It doesn't mean I'm not anti-science. I'm pro-science. I'm anti the idea that we can't try to handle a problem unless someone like you see how we can go in a circle of like never getting out of our problems if we can't try something new. But what you said there, I think was pretty brilliant. So what you're saying is for plantar fasciitis, ankle and toes would kind of like, like the plantar fasciitis would be in the middle. And so with the knee, the knee is in the middle of the hip and the, and the foot. So I, I, I think of it the same way you do as those as like a three, like triple, triple, you know, we talk about triple extension, you know, in training, that's like your, your foot, your knee, your ankle, these are all extending, like to jump, to jump, you have to triple extend. You have to, you have to use all three. They're all three working together. And then the knee becomes kind of this middle child, you know? Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> um, so I think that's interesting there because so many people have foot pain too, but I feel like if we, ha- and I'm just, I'm just like thinking out loud, but I feel like if we handled the toes, we handled the, you know, uh, ankle Achilles, whatever. My experience is like, you get your, you get your toes and your, your ankle, right. And like, you just don't have plantar fasciitis, you know? Um, yeah. And I think the hip is a big one too. Like I, I sometimes think about it from the inverse. What would be the, my best recommendations if someone was like, Nick, I got great feet. I want plantar fasciitis. What should I do? (laughs) To get plantar fasciitis, I would be like, well, you should sit in a chair a lot because your hips are the main driver of your foot Stiffen position. Stiffen those fuckers up. Yeah. Stiffen, Stiffen those, those hips up so they don't up. rotate yeah. at all. Uh, <laughs> and then wear really shitty shoes that come to a point yeah. and that will systematically deactivate all arch creating muscles of your foot. Like that's that's really yeah. important to get plantar fasciitis. Yep. So once you yep. do those two, like the work is done. And so if you work backwards, you're like, well, you should probably regain the ability to have your hip position the bones of your foot so they can support the load. You should probably reclaim the ability to use your arch forming muscles of your foot by getting out of the freaking foot coffins that cause that problem. And then there's really not much else to do apart from like odd self-regulating the load you're putting through your foot so that it can adapt over time. And yeah, like your plantar fascia is not supposed to be a hammock that your whole body rests on all day long. And to, to think that you can do that and not get plantar fasciitis would be crazy. And the fun, the crazy thing is people have those issues. They either get like an injection to calm the pain, which is like, it's literally like the fire alarms going on in your house. You just plug your ears and you're like, yeah, problem solved. No worries. Pop, pop in <laughs> anti-inflammatories. I was popping yeah. them like crazy. And I had the yeah. plantar fasciitis and I had, when I mentioned shin splints, I'm, I only mentioned that one. Cause I had that like, Oh my God. Like, I don't know how bad you've ever had shin splints, but if anyone out there has had them to the point where you think like you had the world's worst case of shit, like you have, it's, <laughs> it's insane how painful and debilitating that can be, but I never tried to do anything for it. <laughs> you know, like I, like I literally tried to, Oh, equipment failure, equipment solution. You know, let me take this. Yeah. Let me like, like, Oh, if I, if I just roll it out hard enough, the pain will go away, but then it comes back or you see it like, Oh man, it's yeah we come, we come from the same world. You just can't cheat it. Like there's no advantage to having shitty hips. There's no advantage to like, you can't, you can't cheat that system and your body's resting all the way down, you know, on this system. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of getting ridiculous. I mean, my hip mobility is, and that's, what's interesting is my hip mobility is as good as anything that I can do with my knees, you know what I mean? But that's kind of, that's Mm. part of the point, you know, like I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have my knees if I didn't have people like, Oh my God, I could never have that ankle mobility and my knees hurt. Oh, wait a second. You know what I mean? Like, so like, why do people say that I could never have, you know, I could never have the health victim mindset is literally one of the biggest obstacles. I think I can never have, I can't do that. My body can't do that. Like people literally are, are already adopting a story that they can't do something. And then they wonder why they can't do it. It's like, there's clearly an obstacle you're self-imposing on yourself. Like until we deal with that shit, nothing's going to really get that much better. Um, yeah. And you know, if, I just wish, like I wish in like grade six, we all learned specific adaptation to impose demand. Your body is a direct reflection of the behaviors and yep. the inputs that you expose it to. Therefore, if you have a problem, it's directly related to inputs you've given your body that don't align with how your body's supposed to work. And yep. that, that essentially erases victim mindset because everything that's fucked up in your body is because of something you're doing, which you probably don't even realize is bad for you. And you might not, and you're likely not even being told what that is by the people who are the helpers. Um, yep. And 
that's kind of how we get in a situation where disease is normalized. Pain is normal. Pain is acceptable, has to be controlled. It was normal for me. I thought it was normal. I didn't, you know, yeah. I never assumed, I never assumed I could actually like do something about it. Mm. Right. And so that, that's why you and I are, are doing what we do. So it's, it's pretty cool. So speaking of things people can do about it, my system is built on every session starting by walking backwards. Now that could just be for an older person, just walking backwards mm. is good for, Why backwards? for a younger person. And we'll, and we'll break that down. So anyone could stand in front of a mirror right now, stand sideways, go to take your first step backwards, your knees over your toes. Like this is why I'm <laughs> knees over toes guy, because it's not like, this isn't a fearful thing. Like it's, yeah. it's actually like impossible to live without your knees going over your toes and backward walking alone has been proven to be an effective screening process for falling in elderly. So like for older people, mm. the better they can walk backwards, the less chance they have of dying of falling. Like it's not even a joke. Dying yes, from seriously. falling is one of the leading causes of premature death in elderly. ER visits, one of the number one cause of ER visits, the ER visits is falling. So I've done over a hundred miles of backward walking. Now in my case, I wanted to do things like dunk. So I figured out any way to put resistance to it. So dragging a sled would be the most obvious one but I quickly figured out that if you get on a treadmill and don't turn it on and turn around and stick your butt against the handle and spin it backwards, do that for five minutes. The amount of people who have gotten out of chronic knee pain just from doing that three times a week for five minutes is absurd. And it shows that's, incredible. that's, that's a perfect example. It's literally like, okay, what motions and poundings and beatings are you putting into your knees? Put it on rewind. I've never seen a case of someone who couldn't get some degree of change just from this concept of reversing out knee pain. So we call it ROKP three times a week. It's just like a part of life. Like that's how you, that's like how we warm up for sessions. It's just by going backwards. So then if you look at that really closely and you think about a normal forward step landing through your heel, now go ahead and look at yourself in the mirror, taking a backward step. Now your toes are bending. Now we're actually loading and strengthening the foot. Whereas when we walk forwards, we're more, we're more putting a beating on the foot. When we walk backwards, we're actually strengthening the foot. So I mm. feel like that is what, I feel like that is what cooked my foot pain was just this backward walking and made me start to realize, holy shit. You could, do, you could be the best at every traditional leg exercise and never once actually bend your and load your feet. You know what I mean? So backwards, backwards, backwards. And we're not talking about a massive commitment. I do it five minutes, three times a week. You know what I mean? That's How did you come across that experiment? What made you say, I'm going to try walking backwards? <laughs> it was because of this quote from Charles Poliquin. So I just started looking for anything where I could try to get my knee stronger. So, and, it, and this is a perfect time to kind of rewind it, right? So if you look at the person who has like the best knee health and they can drop down into the bottom of squats with heavy weights, like perfect posture, all this stuff, like that was the opposite of me, right? So like, I, I couldn't get into that shit, but I found that if I did actually like a fully knees over toes split squat with my front foot elevated because my hips were tight and my ankles were tight, and using assistance because my knees were so weak in terms of what I could express without pain. So I, my favorite lift is called an, an ass to grass split squat. It's not is that what ATG stands for out of curiosity. I, it stands for athletic truth group. I was just trying to be catchy. With them. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to, I'm just going to personally accept that it's ass to grass under the hood. <laughs> and that is totally fine. That was the intention. So like, but that's kind of the philosophy is like, we're going to get, you know, all the way there, but, so I had to kind of just revert. So reverse engineering a squat, like, oh, I can't squat all the way down. Believe it or not, everyone actually can get into a fully deep knee bend. You just might have to regress the ankle mobility you don't have, the hip mobility you don't have, and the right. pain-free knee strength you don't have. So you have three points of regression. So like I have a video on YouTube called like how I took my knees from zero to 100 because I can literally do that exercise now with 100% of my body weight in additional load. But I literally went actually from neg. I sh it should be called from negative zero to a yeah. hundred, you know. But that's yeah, yeah. the 
that's the concept I'm trying to give people. It's not what you can't do. It's at what level can you do that? Right now. And, and it's not that, about being perfect. It's about starting. This is like something you health. do it at your level. Yes. Because who knows what the fuck you could achieve? Yeah. Because I'm people, dude, last summer, right before like Corona just messed everything up. I'm on the basketball court training successful, famous NBA players, teaching them how to improve their dunking. I'm a six, one dude who was never supposed to dunk. And mm. I'm literally out jumping six foot six guys making tens of millions of dollars a year, teaching them how to improve their jumping. <laughs> okay. That's and awesome. That <laughs> shit, like, like you don't know what your potential is. You know what I, I mean? Like anyone listening to this who hasn't, you know, gotten to their goals yet and stuff like it, like your potential could be way more than you think how badly and do you want to explore your potential that's really the fundamental question how badly are yeah. you willing to work to explore your potential because you know i love i truly believe like like you said you're learning how to do vertical jumps from from guys who created programs that they're not even jumping in they're getting other people to jump in your biggest yeah. interview uh with people who might potentially use your services or your programs is yourself, right? Like I don't go to uh, a broke dude to learn financial advice because that's not the best dude for that. And I think, you know, why do I go smiles and that shit ain't. (laughs) Yeah. And he's got like rotten teeth, like red flag, you know? Um, But it's like, I go barefoot all the time because I want to have the most savagely strong feet of anyone on the planet earth. Like I'm not competing against anyone, but like, it's my duty. If I'm going to be the foot dude talking about feet, yeah, I'm, I'm literally, your, I'm proofing my product. I'm making sure exactly. that like, this is- You're forcing it to get better. You're pushing exactly. yourself to get better. But I think that's huge. It's uh, like, you are the product that you can then sell. And by, by refining yourself, you actually refine the ways to be able to explain and share with others. And I think that mindset, the amount of people that work in the health space um, that are unhealthy as hell is like, blows my mind. It's like how, like, you don't even understand- It's still the health. norm. I know. We're still the outliers. I just saw a post and I'll try to word it in a way that no one would look up who it is. There's still famous trainers out there Lots regularly, regularly making posts along the lines of, yeah, my back has been acting up. Fortunately, I have this super expensive belt squat, so I don't have to load my back. And I was still able to get in my leg workout today. With like a million followers. Like this is like people think it's normal. Like you're the trainer. Like, fuck you, dude. Fuck you. Like you're why I had knee surgeries, but it's not really that way. He's not a bad person. He's a part of the system. And that's, it's been a long process for me to go from just being so bitter against every person, normalizing pain, normalizing surgical alterations to fix shit normal. Yeah. To now realizing, dude, like we're all a part of the system. We're all doing the best within our framework. And it's just going to take more people like you and me educating. And so some of these very type of people I've, you know, now helped and they see it differently. It's not, yeah. it's not a personal thing. But it's there should hard. be, there it's, isn't, there is an onus. If you work with people and you're giving them advice to perpetually be curious and try and prove yourself wrong. That is a, that should be an oath you take if you are helping others, because I heard this distinction recently between of two terms, nescient, which means not knowing, like people literally just don't know. Like, I think this is the case with most medical people that are, are people in the world of fitness and health. Right. They're not trying to be bad. It's, it's over their head. That's what they think the truth is. Right. And they're so, they're, they're so removed from experimenting and confirming and observing whether that shit works or not that, you know, their fundamental assumptions are shit and they haven't been updated. And then there's, so that's nescient. And then there's ignorant, which is there is better information out there that's disconfirming that what you're doing is true, but you're choosing to ignore it. When people are nescient and they're giving other people advice that are costing those people time and energy or at worst causing pain, that's what I have a big problem with. And the oath of perpetually being curious and wanting to engage in discussions to figure out better ways. And, you know, this all gets solved by being the example. If you actually walk the walk, you learn and you can be honest with yourself to be like, wow, what I used to do actually doesn't work. Here's a better way. I'm going to share that with people. And part it's of it one is of the best qualities you can have. It's yeah, just you to have to put out yep. what's true without having to justify what you did. Yes. And, and I'm actually going to right here on this. I'm actually going to share exactly what my next program is. Cause you want to talk about that concept. The Sweet. program I start doing next week 
I've never done before. And I'm knees over toes guy. And I'm saying, here's how I'm rebuilding even better. Like mm -hmm. I'm literally like not justifying what I did in the past and saying, here's how. So I was describing that ass to grass split squat. Right. And then what we find really helps accelerate that process is reverse step ups. So like we all, we all know about the step up exercise, like just stepping up onto something. Right. Yep. But now imagine, uh, now imagine you're, you're facing away from the box and you're stepping down and now having the strength to go back up. Now that again is something everyone can do at some point. It's not, Oh, that hurts my knee. Yeah. But what if we put something next to you and you can assist yourself? You can like going down my knees, going downstairs hurts my knees. You actually can at some level and you treat this as an exercise and then you get stronger. So that's actually like my system. If I just kind of explain it, one, two, three, four is backward walking leads to more success. And the better you get at that, the stronger you get at that applying resistance, um, the better you get backwards, the easier it gets to do a reverse step up. The better you get a reverse step up, the easier it gets to do an astrograss split squat. And the better you get an astrograss split squat, the easier it gets to do an astrograss squat. So there, like, there's like my, right. Now I'm starting that back over. I believe in starting each new year back to body weight. Oh no, I get, I have, I get, I can't go into the squat rack. I can't, right. I believe in starting each year over body weight because if you only have your body weight and you want to get like real development, it gives you so much time to work on all these foot and lower leg areas yeah. that just gives might not base. be sexy. Exactly. So it forces you to rebuild your base each year, rebuild your base. And then even for your upper body, what do you have left? I mean, you get gymnastic rings and you start getting more mobility. You start mastering your own body weight. And then you go back to weights. You're like, Oh, wait a second. Overhead pressing doesn't hurt anymore. This doesn't hurt anymore. This anyways. So what I'm doing is I'm taking one of my favorite tools, which is a slant board and the slant board allows you to get those fully deep squats. Once we do get into those, which I should mention again, put a chair on either side of you. You can do a foot, put, stand on a slant board, put a chair on either side of you. You can do a fully deep squat. It's not my job to tell you whether that's right or wrong. It's up for you to decide what abilities you want to have. But mm. I've helped so many people rebuild and, you know, we do it through ability, not by avoiding the knees. Anyways, so I have these slant boards and I started realizing when you're locked up in shoes, even if you are doing calf raises and stuff like that, you can't quite like really get the loading through those toes and stuff. And so we've already been doing a ton of experimenting with this, of doing reverse slant board calf raises. So you could do this seated, like, you know how there's like a seated calf machine at a gym. I'm a huge fan of a seated calf machine of getting into like a knees over toes position and doing seated calf raises to open up ankle mobility and strengthen your feet and lower legs. But there's still a bit of a disconnect when you're just like on a flat surface with a shoe on. And so we've already been taking our slant boards. Like you sit on a bench, you put your feet on our slant board in reverse, and then you like, you know, hold dumbbells on your thighs or something. And we do like sets of 50 of those insane for people who have never felt their soleus muscle. Like you'll actually feel your soleus muscle working for the first time. People have gotten rid of plantar fasciitis in a single session of doing this stuff sometimes, but I'm now rebuilding the body weight stuff. And I'm going to do those reverse step-ups reverse on the slant if that makes sense so cool. we're going all the way like through the big toe and it's the perfect time because if you started adding weight you might just kind of shy away from putting that weight through the feet so i thought it was just based on what you said i was like it's a perfect time to explain that like i'm right there with it i'm not trying to just i'm still experimenting so when i rebuild i've mastered all the all the base body weight shit. that's awesome i think we can that's okay. I can still hear it. Video just went, but I can still hear it. All right. Hold on a second. I'm on do not disturb. So I don't know how that even is. Possible. That's okay. Dude, I love the idea I, of an annual rebuild because, you know, I, yeah. I often look at the framework of experimentation versus exploitation. So exploitation means taking something you learned and exploiting that by either building specific strength or specific ability. Exploring is really like, what can I explore? What abilities are worth exploring? What abilities do I not have right now that I didn't know? And I think not enough people spend time exploring and too many, t too many times with a limited exploration. So you don't even have that many options. You don't have that much understanding because you haven't explored. You immediately go to exploit and build specific strength. But if nothing's integrated or you don't even know the landscape of what you can possibly exploit by exploring, then you're 
cutting yourself short. And I think this annual rebuild sounds like just dedicated and programmed exploration time to figure out what yeah. should I exploit? Um, what, yeah. what are my blind spots basically? And not yeah. enough people do that because it's, once again, I think it's the ego thing. It's so easy to assume that if you're good, you're good, right? No improvement needs to be done. I don't have to change what's already working, but that often leads to like a pigeonholed mindset where like you see trainers that in their day, 20 years ago, they were probably badasses, right? Like professional strength conditioning coaches. But like, if you didn't update your shit in 20 years, you're behind my friend, even if a bunch of people are still paying you boatloads of money, like you gotta be honest with yourself. And I think it's just a lack of exploration from the people who were at their highest level at some point. That's how they get to a place where it's like, dude, how do you not even, how, do you, how does this athlete who's worth millions of dollars not even know how to squat? Like, is, it, is that not a problem? I think it is. So. Yep, that's a hundred percent right. So yeah, I'm starting my, my rebuild. I'm going 12 weeks without weights nice. and I'm gonna have to do these reverse step ups and astrograph split squats, but with that slant board, like facing me, not facing away from me so that I'm going to have to be really stretching and working through the big toe and arches and a kill. And, and you would know, you would know the terminology a million times better than me, but you get the idea. It's like the idea is to combine the stuff that's already working for me, but then really try to get my feet involved, get more loading through the feet. So you know, if I can load through those feet more now, I can create even more of a base because I'm trying to jump even higher next year and I'm trying to jump higher than next year. And my ultimate goal is I want to be able to, I wasn't supposed to be able to dunk. Genetically, my kid's not supposed to be able to dunk. I'm definitely going to be able to train him to dunk, but that means he's going to, I'm going to be almost 50, right? I'm going to be about 50. So I need to be able to dunk when I'm 50 for a guy who couldn't grab the rim and had never grabbed the rim by age 20 to be dunking when he's 50. Yeah. I have big goals. You know what I mean? But the yeah. more I, the more, if I'm dunking when I'm 50, you can bet that I just figured out for a lot of other people not to have so much pain through their lower body. You see what I mean? So yeah, I think that, I think the base could be laid better. I wouldn't stop someone from doing like a normal base, like if the knee, like if the knee is like just kind of like the worst point, maybe it's too much to focus on everything, you know, like on too much at once. But like, I'm I'm making this so that, you know, if someone wants to lay that base again, we're gonna do it in a way that we're trying to get the most badass feet possible. You know, what I mean? like why not get the most badass feet possible? And we do yep. a subject I wouldn't want to forget today is that I may be known as knees over toes guy, but I've probably been just as responsible for making like a million people do tibialis raises meaning like anterior to like like your ankle can go both directions most of us have never it been can what are you talking about us, most of us in our lives have never done like to failure as strength training trying to pull our toes towards us i've done over ten thousand of these you know to fail like i set out i'm like now wait a second that tibialis anterior is right under the knee. What if I try to get, like, I'm not going to have the biggest bench press, but I could try to get the strongest tibs <laughs> in the world. That's what great. would happen? What happened now is I can bound up and down a basketball court and dunk, like, but it's, it's fucking common sense. Like, there's nothing I do that's not common sense. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Idiocracy. It's the best way I can explain my career. Do you know, have you seen that movie? <laughs> I haven't, no. Uh, a guy gets put in a time capsule for like the army as like an experiment and it doesn't work out. And he wakes up like hundreds of years later and he's a normal guy, but he now has the highest IQ in the world. So like all the, <laughs> they're, they're trying to water all their plants with Gatorade and like stuff like, so he literally saves the world by figuring out that they should water the crops with water, not with Gatorade. That's awesome. My point, my point is like, yeah, I've, I've probably done more, tibialis raises to failure meaning dorsiflexion as like a strength movement and i go all the way down so i let that dorsiflexion stretch you know like i let like my foot can flex really good the other way too so i've probably done more sets of those to failure than anyone who's ever lived that's literally like like you flex your bicep you like that that's a muscle there like that's a key human function like no wonder i you know don't have jumpers, knee and shin splints and this and that anymore. Anyways, 
I, well, I, I think wanna... one. I think one thing you mentioned there is like full range strengthening. People love to strengthen in the ranges they own, but they don't think to expand their ownership zone. And you know, I think you know, even from a point that you said before, what came to mind was your expression of ability is limited by the weakest element in your system. Yep. And, yep. you know, when we talk about feet, it's like feet are neglected and therefore they almost by default become the biggest thing that can enhance performance and ability in other parts because it's the one slowing you down. And it's like, yep. you know, we, we, I, I remember we would see this with power lifters. We get them doing like some base conditioning, like literally just spend some time barefoot, do your warm up lifts barefoot. Um, and just like be mindful of that your feet are important. They would do that and they would get bigger increases in some of their lifts than they had gotten after like a month training block of intense lifting. They're like, what is going on here? This doesn't make sense. And it's look up after this. The integration piece this. was missing. Yeah. Look up after this. A power lifter two weeks ago squatted a thousand pounds barefoot um, yes. at, at Das Powerhouse, I think is his name. D A S powerhouse at Dash powerhouse. <laughs> I love that name too. <laughs> uh, his name his name is Andrew House. His last name is House. H A U S. I mean for a power lifter come Power on, House. That's a great. That yeah, is a great, great name. last name. House. Anyways, keep going on what you're saying, but I just want to say what you were saying about the power lifters going barefoot. Like you're not blowing smoke. Like I literally just saw a guy and I have him doing, okay, what's the opposite of powerlifting squat? Probably that ass to grass split squat. So He's been using the ass to grass split squat, which now handled the knee pain. And he's been doing tibialis raises, which is the opposite of powerlifting. So he, he's right. doing like the two opposites, tibialis raises and ATG split squats, handled the knee pain, now went from 875 being painful to now squatted 1,000 pounds for the first time in his life. And go look at that. It was a clean power lift, like in that sport. Yeah. Like this dude might become the top squatter in the world and he's doing it barefoot and he's training shit that other people aren't amazing yeah and i mean according to the thing where the weakest link in your system is the limiter of your global ability the the mission is to actually constantly seek out seek and destroy the weakest links right yes and, and it's, it's an the, opportunity yes and it's, it's the opposite of, of exactly. how people think they're like i'm good at this therefore i'm going to keep doing this i want to be a bit better but it's like well what if you could use less energy to gain more by just working on integration. Like this is where balance beams kind of came from is like, you can have really strong hips, strong muscles around your knees. You can even have strong feet. If none of them speak to each other, they're all gonna suck. And it's like the beam is really not that special, but what it does is it helps connect the dots. It's an integration training tool. And I think that's a, you know, balance and integration are sort of missed elements, right? We have power, we have strength, we have agility. We don't really talk about integration. And yet that is literally the like, key element that binds everything together into this magical human system that allows crazy performance. Um, yep. and, and it's starting to get talked about now, which is cool, but it's like, it seems to have been something we kind of skipped over. Our potential isn't an eight week study. So right. <laughs> yes, if, <laughs> yeah. if you only have eight weeks and you want to improve a standing vertical jump, sure, just squat and deadlift, but where are you going to be eight years from now because it takes about eight years to like actually get towards your potential if you want to like win a gold medal you see what i mean so it's the rest of our life like where does our ha does our happiness come from like how much we jump higher in eight weeks hell fucking no it doesn't right. our happiness comes from the fact that i can dunk now i was too far away me being able to dunk was not an eight-week study that was like a multi-year study you see what it's I mean? a lifetime so, project it sounds like exactly exactly and how about being able to dunk but now five years later you're having knee surgeries and the rest of your life you like can't even crouch down and play with your kid like that's what i was gonna say like, where happiness is not an eight-week study but most of what we're using is from eight-week studies you see what i mean and so i've had i've had students in school reach out and they're like holy shit atg's changed my life over the last two years but my professor's only giving me eight weeks to do my study. How do I test the ATG system in eight weeks? And I'm just like, honestly, you don't like, you're going to have to go change the system. Like, <laughs> you don't like, you're I'm asking the wrong the question. Like, yeah. Like you're going to have to go change that shit, you know? So anyways, I got one more for you that you're going to freaking love. Probably the highest jumping human ever. And someone could debate it, but there would be maybe like a handful of guys at this level is a French dude named Kadur Ziani. Do you know who he is? 
I don't. Holy shit. You're going to be like, did we just become best friends? <laughs> this dude doesn't even, okay. This dude doesn't even lift weights and his feet. So he's my jump mentor and he's crazy, like knees over toes and all. So like the guy became my jump mentor. I've also received a lot of flack of like, you don't need to be that flexible. Like, well, you know, flexibility gets a bad says rap. the so inflexible person always <laughs> right right flexibility and knees over toes in sports performance get a bad rap oh you know don't let your knee over your toe oh flexibility will make you slow all right this guy Kadorziani at his peak had a 50 inch vertical you can see videos of him flying through the air but and he, and he can he's one of the few humans ever who can kick a basketball rim and he's 47 and he can still jump up there and kick the rim. Meaning the flexibility and athleticism is unbelievable, right? That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. He's five foot 11. He can still dunk at 47. That's a world record. No one that short has verified 10 foot. Hold 10 on. Foot five, foot seven? five foot seven, five foot seven, five 11, five 11. Okay. Five okay. 11. That's still impressive. <laughs> he's 40. He's 47 years old. Wow. My point is only that when I you started, what's that, what's that me how to find him? Cause I'm not going to remember will, how to spell I that shit. I will. <laughs> the point I'm getting to is this. He's my jump mentor. And that's when I had my aha moment that I went, cause I'm already known for my jump transformation. Like it's, that's like one of the things I'm known for. Went from a guy who couldn't grab a rim now throwing down dunks, but I don't jump as high as this guy did in his prime. Like I, like he's, like I'm in the 40 inch territory. He's in the 50 inch, like of like literally, if you name the top five highest jumping humans ever, he would be on every list, right? Wow. I'm not in that territory, but guess what I realized? My feet suck compared to this guy. <laughs> what this guy can do with his feet is unbelievable. So that's exactly why I realized, like I'm basically naming these reverse slant board, like everything has to have a name so it doesn't just take forever to say. So like a certain exercise is called a Poliquin step up because it's named after this strength coach, Charles Poliquin. I'm calling all this shit Ziani. That's his last name. Ziani step up, Ziani split squats. Yeah, nice. because, because his feet are so capable. And I think that just adds another layer. And so like, I feel like I could get even faster and jump even higher if I improve my feet that much more. So I'm, you know, my whole life revolves around a yearly system and trying to have levels so that like, if someone wanted to do it again, so like I, I just live the yearly system last summer, I went 12 weeks with no weights. Then I did like my gradual loading, then strength. Then I call it like athletic potential where now it's like, well, how do you like squat and deadlift, but in a way that your knees get more bulletproof from doing it. So like, I'm, I'm just finishing that. And then I'm, I'm starting over, you know, and, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to take my feet to the next level. Anyways, I, I think it couldn't be a more fitting podcast with you, you know, and hopefully I at least explain for people like, you know, roughly how my system works. Backward yeah. walking is knees over toes. Reverse step up is knees over toes. If you go all the way down on a split squat, your knee goes over your toe. If you go all the way down on a squat, your knee goes over your toe. And along that journey, realize that we had to be training the feet and those, that really the soleus and the tibialis, we had to be training. So like the soleus, and the tibialis are massive parts of the system because those are down there below the knee and those are going to dictate how your ankle can move. If your ankle can't move, it becomes like very hard to train the knee. Anyways, that's just like an overview. And, and yeah, I still think that the feet, I think, I think it's still not explored enough. And I think so much of so many of us could be so much happier and be, have so much less pain and be more capable if we train our feet the same way we think about a a bench press. How much do you bench? How much do you foot? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. And you know, I think with feet, they're insanely complex. Like 26 bones, 33 joints in each foot. The degrees of freedom and the the ability for that body part to transform in different shapes is like absolutely astounding. But the kind of beauty of it is that because it's a self-organizing subsystem, literally, if you just take away the things that are stopping you from working properly, it will gradually self-organize. So like the, the, the slightest thing, if you want to restore foot function, spend time barefoot, like your equivalent of walking backwards is like spend five minutes a day barefoot or with natural shoes. Those are kind of interchangeable if you get a good pair of natural shoes. 
Um, and if you want to develop mutant strong feet, one of the simplest things you can do is like take your shoes off, stand on one leg, grab a kettlebell of whatever weight you can tolerate and standing on one leg, pass it in circles around your body. Do as many of those as you can. And like, I kid you not, that will light up your hip and your foot like nothing else before because every time that that kettlebell changes by like a, a fraction of one degree in position your body has to recalibrate readjust and restabilize and you have to take advantage of a lot of different things right your body will immediately be like oh if i use this toe i'm way more stable and the more fatigued you get the more you have to explore different strategies in order to make up for the fact that you're getting tired and certain muscles that you're over relying on are getting tired therefore recruitment of other muscles that you haven't probably used in a long time get recruited and so it's like, even though it's really complex, you can expose it to the simplest things and the most complex behaviors manifest organically. And so, yeah, it, can yeah, be really it doesn't have to be cut. Exactly. It doesn't have to be, it can be a complicated problem, but the solution doesn't have to be complicated. Right. Like complexity you, you does not out, need more complexity. Right. You just laid out a beautifully simple solution. And it's funny because when I do all these reverse step ups and stuff, I do them for sets of 20 reps. So I have as much as about half my weight on those. So, uh, you know, let's say roughly 95 pounds on my back and I'm doing it for 20 reps. I never touch the other foot to the box. And so mm -hmm. often people are like, what the freak? Like, I can't balance. I can't balance. Like it, that's, you know, your feet are just a massive part of that equation. So like what you're saying, like that's real training. So I think, I think instinctively, I think I knew like it was better to go through the foot you know what i mean to mm -hmm. not rest the other foot every like why would you rest the other foot every rep when you could just adapt and so like even in my gym we'd be like oh yeah don't worry like you'll like you'll adapt like you'll you'll actually be able to balance the whole time pretty soon like it just but we never thought about training the feet it was just kind of like we wanted the tension on the leg the whole time but it's, it's still anyways it's just interesting how these different things work together like if you really if you're doing one part right you're probably laying foundations to help the other part. You know what I mean? Anyway, yeah. I, I love how, I love how simple of a, of a solution that is because most people with foot pain probably have never even tried that. You know what I mean? Yep. And you know, one thing with balance is people, it seems to be this cultural thing that almost everyone I talk to takes a fixed mindset to balance. Oh, my balance sucks. As in like, I'm given a certain amount of balance. It was not very good. And that's what I'm stuck with. <laughs> And it's like the fixed mindset there is so terrible. It's like the first thing I ask is, have you ever worked on your balance? And they're like, nope. <laughs> I'm like, well, obviously it's shit. It's like, how can you possibly expect for someone to be good if you've never even tried to train it? And, you know, yeah. like op opening up balance training. And I think the big thing we're trying to do with beams is like make balance training fun, right? It has to be fun. It has to put you into a flow state instead of just being like stand on one leg and do it as long as you can. It's like, well, here's 20 tasks. This one's really easy. It's going to be really hard for you at the start. But once you get, once, once you nail that one, go to the next one. And it gives people like the ability to find the channel, yes. the flow channel where it's like not so hard. It's frustrating. Not so easy. It's boring. Yes. Hard enough that I still can't do it yet, but I know I can get there because I got to a place I didn't think I could get to before. And I think that's the key is like make people, engage with it by making it enjoyable there has to be a route it has to be yeah. fun it has to be it can't has to be, be too hard that you can't do it it's has like it's play. not about as a coach it's not whether i'm right or wrong it's whether you actually enjoy and want to do it you know yes and, and it has to it has to then you know it has to scale down that anyone could do it but it has to have like okay what's the next step what's the next step what yes it, it has to have that process well we're turning that into an app called beeman and it's basically bridging the digital to the physical by creating basically a game like an old school pixelated video game that you play with your body that brings you from zero, there's a hundred tasks and as you go through these tasks and complete them you accumulate different beam colors like martial arts belts like we've got to make it fun and it's funny because this app is literally going to be used by grade six kids who have beams in their school and be used by professional athletes who are like top of their game in either NFL, NBA, NHL. We have a lot of people using They're beams. suffering, by the way. Your favorite yeah. pro athletes are in so Dude, much pain, getting so it many my heart. injects. It's not, it, it's the tough, see, you've worked with pro athletes now. You know, It's an opportunity it though, not, big opportunity. It's not, exactly. It's an opportunity. They can extend their careers. They can be even healthier. They can enjoy their sport more. They can still play with their kids, you know what I mean, after their yes. career. But I just want people to know out there, like pro athlete, like it's, it's not necessarily what it seems like. 
And so many of them are in so much pain to get through what they do. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And it, you almost have to, like, I've started to learn that the gatekeeper to the athletes is the strength conditioning coaches and you have to be friends with them and you have to um, propose things and, and almost make it seem like they thought of it themselves because you can't be a threat. If you're a threat, you're not going to, you're not going to get by the gatekeeper yeah. and you have to yeah. just like be humble and be like, have you tried this? I've tried this and I got really good luck with this athlete. Like maybe give that a go. And you know, when you don't care who gets the credit, uh, a lot of good shit happens. And when you make friends, yeah. instead of claiming that your superior knowledge is what they need to do um, and just say like, have you explored this? Like these experiments are really cool. Give it a go. And the whole idea with creating a tech-based game is like anyone can have that in their hand now, right? There's not, it's, it's not a matter of like knowing all these secrets. It's like, we're all going to make That's this better me. together through our feedback and it's going to be fun as shit. And that, if it's not fun, people don't do it. That simple. I'm a huge fan of that because I definitely have seen some foot experts that it was just so hard to figure out what they're doing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, the idea wasn't to make it accessible, you know? Mm. And I think that, right. I think that's, what's cool about the technology age though, is like, I can have something helpful and I can be like, okay, how do I make this as, you know, scalable and affordable as possible? Whereas, yes. yeah, maybe 30 years ago, it would have been, you know, how do I make my, how do I make it so expensive to train with me or something like that? You know what I mean? Right. So, yep. and I was actually, it was, I actually completely stopped doing personal training um, right when Corona kind of hit because I was training some NBA players, but I kind of had that aha moment for myself where I was like, okay, I'm a specialist in knees. My life was starting to suck when I was about 12 because of my knees. My 12 year old self wouldn't have been able to hire me. Something's wrong. There. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I like that. So, so I love that you're making something that, you know, you're putting it there that it's going to make it accessible. You know what I mean? That people yes. are actually going to be able to apply that because I personally don't think anything I do is special. It's stuff, it's stuff that we should know and we should be able to do yes. and have access to anyway. So I, yeah, I, I think that's, I think that's super awesome. I will definitely um, make sure that I know all about that because, you know, with my clients, you know, people are asking different things all the time. I need to be able to recommend them the best, you know, and things that, things that are like my, like there was one, like I, I, I don't sell any equipment, but I refer guys who sell equipment. That's maybe a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, like things people can get their hands on and use. Right. And I had a guy who was like, I honestly think he's a great guy, but his equipment was like $15,000 or something. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, the guy's, just getting, like, the guy's either getting lucrative or he doesn't know how to bring down his freaking costs. <laughs> it's probably an awesome product and probably worth it for pro athletes. I charge forty nine dollars and fifty cents a month. Like, like, so. Anyways, I, I I love that this is something that I can you know connect people to and and well know that it's we're all in different businesses. Like, I'm not judging, yeah. but this is the the kind of business I'm in is stuff like that the average person could do a kid could mow a couple lawns and do it you know what i mean well with beeman we're going to experiment with a, a hybrid revenue uh, model so basically there's going to be a version that's completely free um but if you're not paying with your money then there's an ad for footwear companies we align with not just like random mass footwear companies that plays for 10 seconds so you have to spend 10 seconds of your time looking at an ad for a footwear company that makes natural footwear and if you click the link then we get paid from that so that's the free version and that's gonna be out there if you don't want any ads you pay a certain amount per year you get no ads and it's basically the way that people support us but the goal is that's radical brilliant. accessibility so that a 10 year old Everyone that has a phone it. gets it yes that's exactly what I do. I have no secrets. I put all my videos on YouTube. Now I haven't even flipped on the ad money on YouTube. I have 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. I haven't even made a penny on ads. And sadly, YouTube still puts ads on it. They have it in their contract. Really? YouTube can still put ads. They made this rule like three years ago. That's such Bunch bullshit. Bastards. I hate that. Like we don't. That's called, it's just called, that's just called greed. That's all. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah. but that's kind of where the cloth I'm cut from is like, when is enough enough? Like that little extra money on the one right. dude who hasn't flipped on ad money. Like that's not what's making or breaking YouTube. Anyways, I agree. It kind of pisses me off because people probably assume that I'm making money on some of it. But right. anyways, the point is just that the point is just that, yeah, someone can go through a little extra trouble themselves and they can still learn it for free 
or mm-hmm. they can get coached at a price that they could, you know, afford. Anyways, I think, I think that's cool. And other hardworking people out there, we just kind of enjoy supporting each other anyways. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I, I, exactly. I don't even go looking, even companies that I help, I don't even go looking like, um, um, like I work with a, a supplement company and they're like, wait, what you've been buying? Like I buy mine full price on Amazon, like from their company. <laughs> like they don't even know my they don't even, they don't even know my shipping address to send me free stuff because like dude if, well, if I you buy it then you can recommend it confidently i do this with like i do this with some of the we have this thing with gorilla mat they make like oversized yoga mats and i just buy them when i need them and they're like why are you buying them like we can literally give them to you i'm just like yeah. you know what if i find it worth my money then i can feel comfortable recommending it to other people knowing they're spending yeah. their hard-earned money and it's like i think that's the like ethical promotion is like dead these days it seems and the the unicorns that do that people feel it and you will get supported it's just the universe will give you a pat it's on the back for doing good shit. yeah it's gonna equal itself out you'll attract more customers like you you know what you'll we have to set an example like we can't just complain yes. if like quote unquote no one is doing something you know what i mean like wait hey like we're not we're not giving up yet you know what i mean like yeah good good guys can good it's guys fighting for succeed. Yeah. yeah good guys can succeed good guys can win too we're not we're not fucking giving up yet no matter what craziness goes on in the world we can't give up yet yeah if you can't if you can't succeed at the game by doing it right then you're it's not the right game to play and it's like there needs yeah. to be hope for people that want to you know like money is this whole other conversation where it's like you know the money you make is an iou from society for shit you did that gave people value that is what it is the yep. more the more value yep. you give to the world the more you will be compensated for that if the game is played with the right rules and, and unfortunately and right money, now you can do a lot of messed up shit and make a lot of money but hopefully that changes but that's the thing that money was either obtained honestly or criminally one where like cuz there's people with money but they're one day away from going to jail and the right. person doing it unethically might not be one day away from going to jail, but mentally he's one day away from going to jail mentally. Sure. You know what I mean? I like so, that. you know, our, our happy, like, that's the thing. Like you can cheat things, but you can't really cheat. You can't really cheat the happiness side of it. You know what I mean? So like, we're all just trying to survive and be happy. And you know, what you need money wise to survive has to do with what you said. And it's the bulk of it. It's not the extra 5%. Like that's right. You know what I mean? Like that's not the difference maker. Uh, anyways that's that's exactly how me and my wife you know think about money we think of it in a different way in a karma way you know that it's like it's gonna it's gonna come back to us based on what we give out and that we shouldn't ever let like every dollar seem like that's like what's gonna make us happy or not you know what i mean yep anyways powerful well an hour flies by quickly when you're chatting with someone yep. that um, in a good discussion. So thank you. Now ben, we need to for... train together. Now I'm like, all right, hold on. Wait a second. Where are you? Where, where, where are you? Where are you out of? Uh, I'm in California. Uh, I'm from Florida. Honestly, I want to go back, but uh, I got to get my, <laughs> wife, on. Gotta get my right. wife on board. Where, where right, are well, you? I'm in Ottawa, Canada. So um, oh, okay. that's okay. When oh, the world anyway. smartens up and we can actually move <laughs> uh, across like fake lines that we drew, um, yep. then we will figure out a time and place to train and do some content or something like that. We, we got long lives ahead of us, so we don't have to rush. Exactly. We're totally like, you know, on the same train of thinking that I'm sure whatever content we created together would just help a lot of people. So we got to make, we got to make that happen in the future. Cool. Sounds good, brother. Let people know where they can find you and, uh, and then we'll close it up. Knees over toast guy. So what do you like? <laughs> I love it. Dude, I just love that name. Like people are going to remember that shit. You can't like, you can't make a typo there. <laughs> I never thought I would go on social media, hated social media, never thought I'd really be able to succeed in getting people to, you know, understand knees over toes. Finally got to a point where it's like, maybe I could succeed at this. So I'm like, if I'm going to make us like, I'm going all out if i'm going on social media i like i'll die happy if people just understand knees over toes so that was you know anyways oh, well job well <laughs> done because you got a good community on there so um yep. and yep. thank you so much for taking the time to people listening we hope you enjoyed that maybe in a couple months we'll do a round two talk about what we're both working on and uh yeah, yeah. catch you next time folks thanks again ben thank you all for listening thanks bro thanks for having me on no worries